I don't think it's an accident that men predominate in philosophy. Part of it, I think, um, is the tradition of arguing, which can be seen as aggressive and combative, and at certain times in the profession that, that ideal has been held up. That feeling has been seen as something to be put aside and reason to be the thing that should rule, and that starts you know, back with Plato. Um, and comes through and, and the women in philosophy class we kind of trace that argument about what reason is and what emotion is and are they opposites and have nothing to do with each other is is there a hierarchy here where one is better looking at contemporary psychology research and even um, neurobiology that the way the brain works is they may not be as separable and even if they were is there some value that's been overlooked by emotion and there's been a lot of feminist theory that that leads into that but students are usually pretty surprised at what the implications of valuing reason over emotion are when they start to realize that groups of people are then left out and seen as less capable. So when you find out that women cannot be full moral agents on some views if because they tend to be more emotional than rational or they can't be full citizens, then they start to realize why it's important to know where these assumptions in the discipline come from, that there are real consequences to them and how they're perceived legally or how they may be dismissed, their views may be dismissed by a boss later, because these are smuggled in assumptions that we haven't faced as a culture. Um, so I think those things matter. The ability to um, state your position and defend it and not crumble in some sense in the face of opposition, and actually welcome opposition, is not something young girls are socialized in as much. Um, more to be polite, to make sure the dinner conversation doesn't get uncomfortable. And there again, I think I was lucky having a family that wasn't afraid of uncomfortable conversation and didn't put that role on. There were three girls and one boy, so that, that wasn't the expected behavior. I think being the youngest helped there too, though. Um, elder siblings break the ground in that way, so perhaps I was lucky in that regard. But I do, I think there are certain personality traits to the discipline that go well with how we socialize boys. Like not that that's how boys and girls are, but how we tend to view them and help them be. Now I also think there's, again, the critical view is important that I don't think that's the most productive way of doing philosophy. So at the same time, I can do it when called upon to do it. I model a different way of, of having that conversation which doesn't have to be as combative. And I don't see reason and emotion as binaries. And so at the same time, I will play the game as it's been established. I do work to challenge that game. Are there more women? When I first got to PLU, I think there was one woman philosophy major, and we have had more and sent some on to graduate work. I don't know that having a woman professor does that, but I think it does help them to see. And we have two women teaching in my department right now. We have a visitor who's been with us for a long time, and she teaches military ethics. I think that's a great kind of thwarting of stereotypes right there um, that helps students break through some of that. We're also not the cuddly kinds of teachers, though, in the philosophy department. And I think there are gender expectations there. Some other disciplines, the women are more nurturing um, in their approach. Um, and I think there is a harder edge to the women philosophy professors, even though within our discipline we may be seen as soft compared to other disciplines. I don't think we are. And that's been a challenge. In teaching, the, the, what the views are, we have a question like, does the professor support, show concern for my learning. Um, and from the women what they mean is did she care about it? And I keep pointing out I care when I enforce the deadlines on papers and when I grade appropriately and if it's a C it's a C and not an A. And, and so what care and concern, man, how that manifests itself and the expectations we have with regard to gender. And there are psych psychological studies that say women have the same stereotypes about women as men do. And so we internalize it and we project it on other women. And so those kinds of things, sitting on committees like Rank and Tenure, have been interesting to look at student comments and put them in that kind of perspective. But there, there are some different expectations, I think, um, for men and women and what counts as being rigorous and what counts as caring and who should do what and what the proper balance is and who can get away with the rigor and who's expected to throw in the care.